Make sure you guys get your five stocks from Moomoo. Link down below. All you have to do is deposit at least $100, and you could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to $3,500. Literally free money. Link down below. And now, let's talk about these markets because we are seeing another round of volatility. What else is new, right, guys? It's currently about 130 on the East Coast, and we have the S&P down over 1%. The Dow is down about 0.7. We have the Russell down 0.8, and we we have the Nasdaq down about 1.5%. And the crazy thing is the markets were actually green in the morning. So we have to break down the markets, stocks, what I'm doing. So hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and let's get right into the video. So take a look. Like I said, this is the five day, five minute chart on SPY, by the way. Like I said, the markets were green in the morning. SPY was trading at $434. Now it's trading at $425. It is down from pre market to now the low of the day. It is down over 2%. And we have Triple Q, if I pull this up, Triple Q was trading at 343 pre market. Now it's trading at 332. It is down about 3% intraday from pre-market highs um, to where we are right now, which is the uh, the low of the day uh, is where we are right now. So a lot of selling pressure. And it's funny because we talk about this all the time, right? We saw the futures markets green in the morning. You know, overnight, I believe they were green as well. And I talk about all the time how if this, uh, if you see the futures market up, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have a green day the next day. Futures could flip-flop, markets flip-flop all the freaking time, and this is a great example of that. We have the VIX up over 3%, gold and silver, both of these are up right now. And Triple Q and SPY, like I've been saying, guys, we are now testing a very big level of support. If I pull up this four-hour chart on SPY, you guys can see 425. We haven't gone much lower than that at all over the past couple of months. Last time we tested 425 was about a month ago. We saw a bit of a rally from 425 up to 455 last time we got to these levels. And the time before a month ago was back in September. We held 425, September, October before running to all-time highs. So if we take this point out, if we break under 425 on SPY, which I believe by the looks of it, it's going to happen. Um, we're probably going to go down to 413, 415, followed by maybe 405, 400 on the lower end. And at that point, it's uh, it's going to be down probably about 10, 12%. Actually, no, more like 12, 15% from all time highs if we get down to about 405, 410 on SPY. And I'm going to be buying it all the way down, guys, to be honest, because as a long term investor, um, looking at it for my long term perspective, uh, I'm going to be buying the S&P 500 as a staple in my portfolio. So I'm not worried about that. And if Triple Q breaks under, keep an eye on um, 335, which it's already breaking. Now we're at 333. So now that we're taking out this critical support, we're at a multi-month low on Triple Q. This might be going down to 315, followed by maybe 300 a share. So keep your eyes on this selling pressure right now, the spike in volatility. This is crazy. And this is what I've been saying, guys. We have to be careful. So watch out for SQQ, which is an ETF, a leveraged ETF that goes up whenever we have triple Q go down. So this is a way that you can trade the. Uh, downside in the market, right? And mind you, it's a leveraged ETF. It's a bit risky. And you could also watch SPXS. SPXS goes up whenever the S&P 500 goes down. It's a bear, a leveraged bear ETF. So those are two that I'm watching as we are seeing downside and probably more downside uh, from here. And I'd love to know your thoughts as always. Make sure to hit the like button, drop me a comment, and make sure to subscribe if you guys do want to see more content like this. We're breaking down the markets every day, stocks, news. You know, we break down charts, valuations, financials. We do it all here on the channel, so make sure to subscribe. And now let's talk about some stocks that I'm looking at. Um, I guess this is a REIT, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the first one. It's PSA, public storage. Let me pop it up. PSA, they reported earnings, I believe, yesterday. The stock's up 3% right now. And I'm, I'm watching it because 
After the earnings report, we saw a nice gap up above the moving averages, right? If you guys take a look here, we were trading under the moving averages, I believe yesterday, um, actually maybe not yesterday, but a couple of days ago, right? And now we got the earnings, it's breaking out. This thing got up all the way to about, let's see here, 375 this morning. Now it's trading at 352. So it did drop about 5% intraday. It's come down about 5%. But overall, the gap above these moving averages, uh, it makes me want to watch it. And that's why I'm talking about it here on this uh, on this video. They had EPS of $3.17, $724.7 million in revenue. They see full year 22 revenue growth of about 12 to 15%. And they see full year 22 core funds from operations of about $14.75 to $15.65 per share. And let me just pull this up quickly bear with me guys i want to see what their dividend yield is because i'm sure they do pay a nice dividend they pay about eight dollars a year per share that comes to about 2.4 uh rather 2.34 percent dividend yield not too bad so I'm not looking at it more from a I'm not looking at it from a long-term perspective I'm looking at it more from a trading perspective again because we moved out of these moving averages we broke above them so let's keep an eye on public storage you know if this starts breaking out 355 360 again that might be a spot uh, where it could start gaining momentum we also have MDLZ Mondelez look at this one guys Mondelez is currently at break even um not doing much on the day. But what we're noticing here on the four-hour chart is a clear wedge where uh, we've been making higher lows the past couple of weeks and lower highs at the same time since the end of uh, January about a month ago. So we're in this wedge. We're fighting now to break out of these moving averages. It does seem like they reported earnings a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see these earnings. Um, let's see here. They ended up... Um, they missed EPS 71 cents versus 72 estimated, but they beat sales 7.66 versus 7.59 billion. Let's see if they're, uh, they, uh, expect high single year or a single digit adjusted EPS growth for full year 22 and full year 22 free cash flow of three plus billion dollars. So I'm looking at this more as a trade guys. If this starts breaking out of the 50 moving average at about 67 dollars we break out of the wedge at about 68 dollars this might really start gaining some steam so i'm going to put my alert right now at 67 dollars and 50 cents if we take that point out we start gapping out of this moving average this will be a play a uh, play in my opinion so that's mdlz mondelez we also have johnson and johnson look at this this stock has been slaughtered recently and you guys can see a clear triple top, that's number one. It makes sense why this thing got slaughtered after failing at 174 three separate times, as you guys can see based on this uh, chart. The triple top, very clear. Now we got ourselves down about 7% from that triple top. We're down a good $13. Not quite yet in correction territory. We're close, not quite there yet. Uh, uh, but now it's 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 more oversold than overbought. We're approaching the uh, upwards trend line here. You guys can see we held the higher low back in uh, December at about 155. The next low we held was in about a month ago at about 158. And now we're holding 160, 161. We're about to break 162 as the stock is up half a percent today so far. So I want to see if we get momentum um, maybe to 163, 164. If we start breaking out of this downtrend, if you guys look on this 20-day chart, you guys can see the downtrend. If we start breaking out of there, let's say 163, 164, <clears throat> that is where we really uh, could start gaining some steam towards 170, 175 again. So I'm watching J&J. &J, Public Storage, Mondelez, those are three stocks right now that I'm looking at in the midst of, well, I guess one's a REIT, uh, in the midst of all of this selling. And we also have DraftKings, believe it or not, DraftKings, I mentioned this in my Patreon video this morning, DraftKings is up 9.2% today. It's ripping yet again, and that's after yesterday where it went up, what? 8%, I forget, some, some crazy. So it's it's having 
Two straight back-to-back days of green. I think we had a Citigroup analyst. Yes, Citigroup maintains buy on DraftKings. That came out today with a $35 price target. Yesterday, we had a couple of you know upgrades from uh, a couple of different firms here. So, in my opinion, DraftKings, all it needs is a couple of quarters where it shows losses are, are narrowing, profitability is coming, and I, I think they said on their earnings call two two years profitability, maybe three years, which three years, yes. I mean, that's not it's not a lifetime away, but it's also not a couple of quarters from now. So we're going to have to wait a little bit, but I'm telling you, if DraftKings, their losses could start narrowing, we start seeing profitability around the corner. We already have analysts that are bullish. If we get some big money starting to get in DraftKings to push this thing up as we're getting towards profitability, I think this could really do well, especially if they execute. Obviously, a lot of things have to fall in place, but I'm in it. I'm in it, and I'm riding, and to see it up 9% today, that is pretty solid. Snapchat's up 2%. We have some silver stocks moving. Uh, First Majestic Silver's up 2.5%. And uh, we have a lot of red. We have a lot of red. My most red stock on my watch list is Airbnb, down 7%. Tesla's down over 4%. Um, and the list goes on. Starbucks, SoFi, Amazon, Baba, Visa, all these stocks, Apple. All these are not doing well today. Google's uh, down about half a percent. If Google gets under, let's wrap the video up after this, guys. If Google gets under 2,500, that's what I'm waiting for. Or at least to 20, if it breaks the lows from about a month ago, 2,500, we start going down 24, 23. That is where I'm going to be buying way more Google. I'm just being patient. I'm being patient. And uh, you guys know I made a video on it. Well, I didn't make a specific video on it, but I've mentioned it in my videos how I'm trying to build as much uh, of a Google position within reason before the split. So that's pretty much it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts. And if you want all my moves, buy, sells, call outs, real time, that's on Patreon, link down below. And if you want some free money for Moomoo, that's also linked down below. All you have to do is deposit at least $100 and you could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to $3,500. Link down below, free money. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.